Hi, and thanks for tuning into this 6.5 Media virtual podcast. I'm Will Townsend. I manage the networking and security practices for more insights and strategy. Today, I'm joined by Boost Mobile and Nokia executives. We're talking about the transformative impact of artificial intelligence in the modern day and how AI is driving change in customer engagement, operations, monetization, and future business models. So Srini, Dawood, it's great to be talking to you today. Great to be here, thank you. Yeah, Dawood, let, let's start for, with you. And so from Boost Mobile's perspective, how is AI gonna redefine the core value proposition of telecom operations in the next decade? And that's that's a long time in the tech industry, but yep. we'd love to get your insights. It is a long time in the tech industry, but definitely a pretty long time in the telecom industry. So again, a great first question to start with, yep. and I'm happy to share my perspective on this. So. Uh, for the most part, you know, not just 5G, if you go back to 4G and 3G, uh, you know, the telecom operators have become nothing more than just connectivity providers, right? AI, if we enable it the right way, it's going to enable us as operators to not just be the connectivity providers, but also become the intelligent service enablers and also strategic technology partners, right? Uh, I expect that within the upcoming decade, it's not just, AI is not going to just help us optimize the networks. It's also gonna help us create new business models and services that are deeply integrated in our daily lives and the lives of our consumers, uh, as well as the operational workflows for our enterprises. So again, there's a lot of hype about AI, but I say it's not really hype. AI is real and it's here. It certainly is. And your point is well stated that, you know, in the past, you know, right, wrong or indifferent, um, it was all about access, right? You know, to your point in the 3G and the 4G world, I think with 5G and standalone, we're beginning to see um, a shift in that. And um, that is a good thing because companies like Boost Mobile make significant investments in infrastructure and spectrum, and you need to reap the rewards of that. But it also delivers tremendous value to customers. So Srini, I'd love to get your insight from Nokia's perspective. Where do you see the potential for AI to unlock revenue streams in telecom beyond just access? I think uh, there. Uh, just to add to what uh, Dawood just said, we clearly see a potential of actually growing the AI investments almost by 20% by all the operators, and that's what we hear from everybody. Um, according to some of the research that we've actually done along with STL partners, I think uh, uh, there are um, there are qu quite a few areas where uh, we could really utilize and tap into the potential of AI beyond uh, the uh, connectivity part. The first one is uh, to really drive enterprise revenue. So there are operators who are actually doing this today to really build a mechanism with an AI to include, uh, to improve the enterprise revenue. So that's something which we can certainly talk about. There are also uh, specific applications of AI to improve improve network performance. Uh, that's something uh, which, which is being done by several operators. The third area that I would really talk about is in the area of cybersecurity, critical infrastructure security, or network security, as we would call it as. This is one area where operators are actually tapping into the enormous potential of the traditional AI, generative AI, and agentic AI to really secure their critical infrastructure given the evolution that's actually happening in the threat vectors as well as the uh, exploits that are actually coming in from different attack vectors as well. Yeah, and I think you know one of the biggest challenges with mobile networks is just the, 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 the immense number of devices and users that are on these networks, right? So it creates a massive attack surface for, for bad actors, but you touched on applications and I'm wondering, um, you know, you're working with multiple network operators, including Boost. Are you seeing a few applications really rise to the top with respect to, to generative AI? I would say the first one would be the customer service applications. And I'm sure uh, uh, everybody, every operator, I would say 95% of the operators are actually utilizing AI, all three types of AI that I earlier alluded to. Yeah. to improve customer uh, service uh, and the customer experience per se. Um, certainly, uh, there, is a, there is an initiative to drive autonomous networks, uh, basically to take out the human intervention from managing the network operations to move towards zero-touch networks. And that's something which is uh, being actually uh, addressed by many operators. And that's one of the key area of application, if you ask me. 
And Dawood, I'm curious from Boost Mobile's perspective, what are you seeing as the priority with respect to applications? I mean, I have some guesses there, but would love to get your, your thoughts on that. Any hit on the one that's most near and dear to us, that's customer experience. Uh, okay. We're being very intentional about how AI immediately gives us the benefits on improving customer experience. Uh, it's not just that, it's also how does how do we use AI to essentially provide a better user experience, customer experience? How do we track the the usage patterns, the you know, the service interactions with the customers to offer more like you know, value-added services as well as personalized offerings? So these are some things that we are definitely uh, looking into. You know, obviously, the aspect of continuously optimizing your network and how to do that in a more efficient way, that's never going to go away, but that's the status quo. That's always going to be there. But yeah. we are shifting focus towards essentially hyper-personalized services in, in, in uh, targeted marketing. And, you know, delivering a very resilient, always available network is going to help companies like yourselves reduce churn, right? And that, yeah. that's a benchmark that all mobile network operators measure. And, and you want to, you want to foster loyalty. It, it costs quite a bit of money to, to attract a subscriber, right? And, and you certainly don't want to lose a subscriber based on that. But there are also a lot of challenges with the deployment of, of modern AI tools. There are concerns around data leakage, privacy, poisoning of, of models and, and it could actually be a negative if it's not managed correctly. So I'm wondering, David, how are you balancing and you know preparing your organization to take advantage of, of the full potential that AI delivers, certainly from an automation and an autonomous networks perspective, but also yeah. maintaining you know, the need for transparency and security? I mean, there are a few things we're doing uh, to address this very concern. And the concern is it, it's very real, right? Number yeah. one, um, you know, we want to make sure we're developing ethical AI frame frameworks, right? Uh, they have to be clear, transparent policies have to exist on how we utilize and consume the customer data. We have to make sure it aligns with our principles, the ethical principles, and is, of course, is compliant with the local regulations. Our customers should be able to understand very easily what data is being collected and why, right? Uh, another key aspect of it would be keeping the human in the loop, right? Do not let AI go rogue. Uh, AI can automate a ton of tasks, but it is really critical to maintain that human oversight, especially for high stakes decisions or complex issues, right? Um, yeah. You know, a chatbot can handle your queries, but a human agent should be available when you're starting to talk about sensitive data, when you're talking about, uh, you know, CPNI. So that's another key aspect. Uh, the third aspect is, you know, ensuring robust security. We want to use AI and the advanced security it provides uh, to essentially protect the customer data, right? Use it for real-time anomaly detection, use it for threat protection, threat mitigation, all of those good things. And mm -hmm. last but not the least is clear communication. We have to be proactive. We have to be extremely transparent with our customers on how we're using AI to improve their experience, right? I just talked about the, the customer experience. So we don't want to hide this stuff. We want to be you know, open about it. We have to go out yeah. and showcase how AI-powered tools are actually leading to faster resolution, more relevant offers, and better net performance and better user experience at the end of it all. Yeah, and I, you know, I think for a lot of people, AI is sort of this black box, right? And it's magic, and you have these large language models that require data to be trained. And I'm, I'm so glad that you, you mentioned the human in the loop. That is so important because we're still in the very early nascent days of modern AI. These models require data. They require context for them to improve. And so there are going to be a few bumps along the road. I mean, you know, there are concerns around hallucination and, and that sort of thing. And Sherry, you know, I've worked with the Nokia team um, over the last, you know, year, year and a half. Um, we've collaborated, my firm has collaborated with Nokia to publish, um, you know, some papers around what you're doing with your autonomous networks platform. And I'm wondering, can you sort of address the same question that 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 Dawa just uh, answered? What is Nokia doing to ensure some of these same things? So I think uh, Dawa really mentioned very key power points that uh, communication service providers should address in terms of getting the best out of AI. The couple more that I would really like to talk about. Uh, the first thing is. Uh, 
Today, none of the models that we have, whether it is open source or closed source, uh, they are actually purpose built for handling telco specific uh, um, problems or solving telco specific problems. So training these models with telco specific data, whether it is LLMs, uh, whether it is talking about the rack process, I think these things have to be thought of uh, very uh, meticulously. And I think that's something which we are trying to do to really take the horizontal models and train them with the 3GPP specific data, with RFCs, uh, with uh, with telco specific data, with the uh, the knowledge that we've actually gathered over the period of last 40, 50 years in terms of the networks, in terms of building, managing, and maintaining networks. I think that's something which we are really contributing to. The second aspect which you talked about is the autonomous networks. Uh, I think in a nutshell, as I was mentioning earlier, we're focusing on delivering zero-touch operations or zero-touch uh, operations to our customers. Uh, and we believe that that is only going to happen uh, with three specific ingredients, that is to zero trouble, zero weight, and zero trust. So bringing in the capabilities of orchestration, assurance, and analytics, and also adding security on top of that and making sure that AI is utilized across all these functions and domains to drive the whole autonomous networks vision for our telco service providers. So that's something which we are focused towards. The journey has just started. I think there's still a long way to go uh, given the diversity and the complexity in the networks across our customers. And, but I think we've made uh, some major strides in actually helping our customers in these uh, areas. I think you certainly have. And I've, I've shared my insights on social media and through my writing and, and other video work as well. I mean, one of the things that I'm very excited about is the whole notion of agentic frameworks and how that has so much potential in driving just massive scale, massive automation, simplifying the provisioning for customers of Nokia's like Boost Mobile, and it's it's super exciting. But as we wrap up our conversation, Dawood, I'd like to go back to you and um, and ask you for a prediction. So what do you believe if, if we sort of look forward, I'm gonna say five years, let's look forward five years from now, what sort of bold AI innovations could fundamentally reshape how your network and other telecom networks operate and deliver value? Uh, all right, so we, we are a relatively newer network. So we're cloud native 100%, uh, right? But AI could not have come in at a better time. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, luckily, we've managed to so far keep it pretty flat in terms of organization. Not We don't have a massive organization that runs our, our network. But going forward, there are a couple of areas that I believe, uh, you know, AI is going to fundamentally reshape uh, us, right? And uh, potentially the other networks as well. The first one is by being fully autonomous. The second one is, uh, you know, uh, uh, by the way, fully autonomous with self-healing. The second one would be the AI native network architecture, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we are actually, we recently have made a public announcement about actually having digital twin of our network and essentially creating a virtual replica of our entire network so we can test, you know, certain changes and see how the effect is going to have on our network. So this is something we're very bullish on. This is something we're going to continue to refine over the next several years. Mm -hmm. And right now we're an automated network, but we're nowhere close to be fully autonomous. Uh, neither is any network in the world, but I think that's definitely something uh, we want to work towards because that's going to allow us to free up time towards more enhancements and technology innovations that we want to work towards. The second one is having an AI native network architecture. Okay, Right now, even though we were cloud native to begin with, AI was still, because it came in a few years later, it's still an add-on to the network. Okay, Going forward, we're looking for the likes of Nokia, as an example, and I'm very actively involved in shaping the, the technology strategy within Nokia with, with all the product domains. We are looking for our vendor community to go bring in AI natively into their products, right? to, to essentially enhance. We don't want to put over the top stuff and wrap it around we want the native AI agents to be coming in from the products and essentially stitching things together for us. I think this is going to lead us to build not just more efficient networks, but also dynamic and adaptable networks as our uh, user needs and market demands uh, shift and, and change. Yeah, and I, you know, and I, I wrote about AI RAN recently. I published an article on on LinkedIn and just you know the opportunity to be a lot more efficient with 
the the investment that that for example Boost Mobile makes and and Spectrum and and just getting more out of the, the those multi billion dollar investments. But Trini, as we wrap up the conversation, would love to get your your perspective on the same question that I asked Dawood. Yeah, in fact, uh, Dawood and team have been uh, pioneers in technology and they push us beyond the envelope in terms of making sure that we drive automation to the hilt. A couple of things that I would like to highlight, uh, which are already alluded to by Dawood. The first one is the self-governing networks. Uh, we, the, it is now time to look beyond the basic automation. Uh, there will be future networks that will be fully autonomous, where human will pretty much act like a supervisor more than uh, some uh, or an observer, uh, whereas the network actually runs by itself. Uh, it will make independent decisions, and then it will also include agentic AI to collaborate and have the right context uh, to run the network by itself. So that's something which uh, we believe is going to happen if I gaze into a crystal ball. The second important aspect, which again Dawood uh, talked about, is the predictive uh, and self-healing. Uh, so it's not just about analyzing the historical data and predicting what's going to happen to the KPIs and SLAs in the future. There is also uh, going to be uh, uh, other items or other aspects that will be considered, which are going to be the lateral uh, piece of information. And Agentic AI will make sure that uh, the network parameters are adjusted accordingly to make sure that the network self-heals based based on a different changes that are likely to happen, both in the internal as well as external environment. So these are the two things. Both of them will eventually drive the autonomous networks approach that we're talking about. And we believe uh, autonomous network story is going to be a reality in the next five years or so. And that will certainly become uh, a point of, uh, uh, I would say, nirvana for many of the operators. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's going to be nirvana for subscribers as well, right? I mean, it's just going to create more predictability, higher availability. I mean, even like today, like, you know, I'm a sports fan and when I when I go to a sporting event, you know, just, you know, and, and the network becomes oversubscribed, if you think about it, an autonomous network is gonna is gonna address that, right? And it's just it's a win-win. Um, it's it's a win for mobile network operators and it's a win for subscribers. So gentlemen, I wanna thank you for your time. It's been a great conversation. I wanna thank our viewers again for tuning into the 65 Media Virtual Podcast and have a great day.